uh, and come from anywhere. Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin came out top among 17 other heads of state. He be presiding over a combined GDP of some 48 trillion dollars. As reasons for that decision, the editors uh, cited Russia's, and this is a curious turn of phrase, acquisition of the Crimean uh, Peninsula, his management of the international standoff over Ukraine, and a $400 billion gas pipeline deal that was signed with China back in May of this year. US President Barack Obama came in second. That is, of course, despite being the head of the world's largest economy and the world's most powerful army. Forbes saying he came in second for a reluctance to wield and use that power. Chinese leader uh, Xi Jinping came in third. Pope Francis fourth, and that is worth explanation too. He is the head of a religion that accounts for 1.2 billion people, or more than one in six people on the planet. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, fifth. Uh, Janet Yellen, the head of the US Federal Reserve, is sixth. And I tell you what, if you can be the head of the, the, the Reserve Bank in the United States and come in sixth, but the leader of that country and he comes in second, that's curious to me. Bill Gates is seventh. The head of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, is eighth. Google executives Larry Page and Sergey Brin are joint ninth, while UK Prime Minister David Cameron rounds out the top ten. On the Australian front, we only contributed one person to the list. Gina Reinhart comes in at 66th. You might, may, we may lay claim to Rupert Murdoch. The, the Murdoch family came in 32nd. For mine, and I'm interested in what people will... Uh, think of the list and I'm interested in what people think or who they think is the most powerful person in the world. I can't believe that the US president is at the top of these sorts of polls by default. Biggest economy in the world, largest military spend by so much it doesn't even matter. Obviously the Forbes methodology is its own, but this afternoon I'm interested in what you think, folks. Eight double two three double O double O. Who would you nominate? Most powerful person in the world. In fact, for a bonus point, you can nominate the most powerful person in Australia in your view if you want to uh, localise it a little bit more. And there are no as I say, no right or wrong answers. What we'll do is run a little bit of a poll over the course of the afternoon and get a sense of what the afternoon audience thinks. And and look, you can think broader than politics. The more creative perhaps the better. What do you think? To get the conversation started, we thought we might enlist the help of some of our regular or semi-regular contributors to get their thoughts. And we start with uh, social policy commentator Terry Barnes. G'day, Terry. G'day, Will. Nice to talk to you again. Yeah, you too. Um, do you think it's, it's probably worth considering some sort of definition of power as we embark on this conversation? Yes, yes, I definitely think you do. And I actually think that power has... There's two aspects to it. The first one is hard power which I think is the ability to decide what other people, countries, companies, organisations, whoever, uh, say and do. And that can include the political power of people like, uh, say, Tony Abbott as Prime Minister and the government. But there's also what I call soft power. Uh, So whether or not you have that hard power, that you can actually have the ability to influence people, agendas, actions, politics, you name it. And I think uh, if you look at the Forbes list, there's a combination of hard and soft power there too. You have a nomination? Well, the most powerful person in the world, if you look at it in hard power terms, I think Forbes is right. I think Vladimir Putin and his um, his antics in the last uh, year or so have uh, uh, made everybody else react in one way or another. Mm. He's, he's called the political tune in a big way in international affairs. But I think if you're looking at the most powerful person in the world, I reckon it's the bloke who actually can pull the plug on the internet when you think about it, because that's (laughs) really the the bloke who actually controls what we say and think and communicate with each other. But if we can't find him, I think there are there are three. I think Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. Yep. I think uh, he came in at 22nd on the I know, list. I know. And basically... That surprised me as well. And he, But he's revolutionised the way we talk to each other. Yeah. How we share our, our thoughts, our ideas, what we do. And the other people, I think, uh, came in at joint number nine, uh, Sergey Brin and Larry Page of Google. Because mm. without Google, I mean, we can't... Uh, you know, that they control and and influence the way we access information, uh, the choice of information, and so on. So, 
And I think information is king in the modern world. So those people, I think, have more power than, than people like I, even Barack Obama. Yeah, look, I think that's a great point. And I, I was surprised by, I, I think, having the, the two Google executives in the top ten makes a bit of sense. But not having Mark Zuckerberg uh, closer to the ten surprises me. And certainly if you consider that you've got uh, the Pope there in the, in the top five or six because he is... Uh, the head of a religion that includes over a billion people, 1.2 billion, I think. That's right. You, you've got 1.3 billion active Facebook users every month. <laughs> so if the measure is the sort of reach of the community that you are, you know, in inverted commas, in charge of, well, he's got a legitimate claim to being a bit higher, but, I would have thought. But with the internet, those, those three people have really revolutionised uh, the way we talk and communicate with each other and... and uh, both friends and perfect strangers. But the other thing is because particularly Google has brought up so many internet-related uh, properties that we take for granted now, and YouTube's a good example of that. You know, all those funny cat videos come to you courtesy of those two blokes. Yeah. Um, yeah it, their, their influence is so far-reaching and fundamental. And if you're actually going on to ask me who the most powerful person in Australia is, and yep. for that reason I would say Rupert Murdoch, even yep. though he's uh, an expat Australian. Uh, he and his family uh, not just own newspapers and uh, electronic media, um, uh, but they help uh, influence what we think, what we do, how we entertain ourselves, the, the way we see the world. And I think, uh, you know, the fact that uh, the Fox Network, uh, which Rupert owns, uh, is the home of The Simpsons, for instance, uh, you know, just gives you an indication of how great his reach is. Mm. And the fact that People with hard power in Australia, like Tony Abbott, uh, are prepared to uh, give him a lot of lot of their time and yeah. consideration. I mean, Tony Abbott's been to uh, New York twice, I think, for dinner with Rupert Murdoch this year, just alone. So um, that's a very great reach. But if you were going to ask me who the most powerful politician in Australia is, I wouldn't say it's Tony Abbott, to be honest. Who would you say? At the moment, it's Jackie Lambie. Think about it. I mean, it's what, she, that now that goes back to our definition of power, doesn't well, that's it? Right. I mean, she's, she, she's exerting influence over the media, but in terms of the legislative agenda, she's not having much of a say, is she? Oh, I think she's deciding. She's calling the shots at the moment. I well, mean, but, she's well, saying but, a lot. But no, think about it. I mean, her stand on defence force uh, pay is uh, uh, becoming an ultimatum, not just to Tony Abbott and the government. You know, what she'll vote on and what she won't. But she's actually sending an ultimatum to Clive Palmer. You know, the bloke yeah. is supposed to be pulling all yeah. these strings. So at the moment, everybody's jumping to her tune. Now, yeah. that might change tomorrow. But at, at if this you ask moment? Me, at this moment, she is the most oh, powerful I like politician. It. Terry, you've got the ball rolling beautifully. Thank you very much for your time. No worries, Will. Thanks uh, for having me. That's our social policy commentator, Terry Barnes. I like it. A whole range of thoughts start, as you might agree, disagree. 8223 is the number.